Hello, in this video I'm going to show you a set of software I recommend for people who are just switching to window managers, usually from desktop environments, because you're going to learn very quickly that your window manager, all it does is manage windows. And it's, gonna, it's not going to handle a lot of functionality that you take for granted, like notifications you will not get, wallpapers will not be set, and application menus don't exist by default. All those exist as separate programs that you will have to install manually. And this is a curated set of software that I have, uh, I've created, specifically because they're all very easy to use. Um, the, the number one thing between all of them is that they have a graphical user interface to configure things. And if not, they use a config file, not a... Uh, they don't require recompiling. So when you're moving to a window manager or really learning anything new, you're going to want to minimize the things you have to learn. And this set of software is just here so you can focus on the window manager for the time being. This isn't to say that all this stuff is what I would necessarily use. Not because it's bad, just not my preference. So let's get started. So from, from left to right, we have LX session, which is a pull kit front end. Basically, when you this is so when you run a program that needs more permission elevated privileges it'll prompt you with your password enter it in and it's it, it works it works fine like in my case i use this because when i run my virtual machine i have to log in for root access and this handles it for me nitrogen is a wallpaper setter it's very easy to use it has a nice gui very fast Thunar is a file browser. If you ever use Explorer on Windows, it's very similar. This is actually the default file browser in XFCE, so if you come from XFCE, you'll feel right at home. JPEG View is an image viewer, very reminiscent of Windows XP or Windows 7 image viewer. The Windows Vista one might look like that, but I've never used it. LX Terminal is a very easy to use terminal, has a nice GUI to configure things, change things like the font and colors and stuff. MPV is a video player, or media player in general also plays audio and stuff. LX Appearance lets you change your GTK theme, so any GTK programs will reflect the changes uh, set in LX Appearance. Dunce will handle your notifications, and Rofi will handle your, will handle your uh, menus. Uh, in this channel, you may have seen me use D-Menu. Rofi will also handle D-Menu things. There's a compatibility layer, but we'll get to that later. I already have all these installed for the sake of uh, expedience. So, also I use X and the RC to launch my window manager. So, if you, if you use a display manager, you're going to have to use an auto start script, depending on your window manager. That's, again... This video is window manager agnostics, so that's out of the scope of the video. So I'm going to start X here, and you can see that we have no wallpaper at all, so let's fix that. Launch a terminal. I've also done some changes to X and RC already, or my i3 config already, but we'll get to that in a second. If you want to, if you want to change your wallpaper, then you're going to have to run nitrogen. Preferences, add a directory, and add the folder that has all your wallpapers in it. In my case, it's pics. Hit OK. And you can see my wallpaper right here. If you have several of them, they'll populate down the line like this. Hit Apply. And you can see I now have a wallpaper. And if you restart i3 you will notice that this change is not persistent so if I back out and restart i3 the, the wallpaper is gone right so what you gotta do is add to your xnet rc or whatever you use as a startup script you're gonna run nitrogen dash dash restore ampersand And now, whenever you run i3 or whatever window manager you're using, 
nitrogen will automatically restore the last used wallpaper that it remembers you're using, right? So, next thing on the agenda, if you want to configure your window manager to um, use Rofi as your application launcher, you're going to want to tell it to run Rofi show dRun, right? So, this will have like a nice list of all your programs you have installed. And if you're using i3, I believe by default, mod D. Yeah, so I just commented out mod D exec D menu run. We're not, we're not using D menu. And I changed it to say Rofi dash show D run. And when you restart uh, I3, hit mod D and your, your application menu will show up, right? So, Thunar, not much to talk about. You know, if you have, if you use XFCE, it's, a, it's the same file browser. Uh, you can, um, da -da -da -da, down the list. Yeah, GPIC view, I'll show you. If you click on something, open a file, open an image, you'll get this little, men this, this GUI here, and you can navigate back, forth. You got slideshow support, zoom out, zoom in. Again, if you use the file, bra or the, uh, uh, image viewer in Windows 7 or Windows XP or even in 10 if you have a know-how to how to enable it This this looks exactly the same. It's almost a complete clone and That's why I recommend it because it's very very easy to use I'm not sure if it supports GIF, so just be aware of that LX terminal I've already configured i3 to use this terminal to save some time because X term sucks but um, if you want to configure i3 to use LX terminal, you can just search start a terminal and make a bind. I think it said it says i3 sensible term by default, something like that. Just 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 replace that with LX terminal and reload it. And now when you open a terminal, so mod enter, it'll open another instance of LX term. And the reason why I recommend LX term Okay, so life pro tip, give your virtual machine more than two cores and two gigs of RAM. Um, is because you can configure it with the GUI and it's very easy to use, right? Like you got your colors here, uh, you, got your ter you got your fonts here and stuff. It's very it's a very easy terminal to use. MPV will be a little bit hard to show you because I don't have any videos on this VM, but again, it's very easy to use. You usually don't launch it like this, but if you open a file or a video in Thunar, you can open it with MPV, and it'll play the video just fine. It's a lot like VLC, but the image quality, from my experience, has been a lot more reliable and a lot better. It's also more configurable if you feel so inclined. As for theme support, or changing your theme, LX appearance, now keep in mind, in, so the way D, uh, D run works, or Rofi D run, and D menu does this too, if you run like, the application menu mode, I forgot what it was called, but it reads the desktop files, which basically will give you more human readable names, but sometimes it's some esoteric garbage, like customized look and feel. That's LX appearance, and you wouldn't know that unless you knew that that's what the desktop file said. Just keep that in mind. You might get a little bit, the, the, the name that you get here might be a little bit different than, uh, than what you get in, uh, or what you expect the executable name to be. If that's, if that's a problem, you think, then I'd recommend, instead of changing the config file to say Ro Rofi D run to Rofi show run, 
and it'll have the executable names instead. I don't use this because it gives me an insane amount of options, most of which I can't even run in a GUI. Like, if I run awk, it's gonna... Yeah, it's just gonna do that, and that's not really useful for me. But, something to keep in mind. Anyways, back to uh, LX Appearance. Um, you can change your themes here for GTK programs. So I change it to this default theme, and I run Thunar. Thunar looks different. Again, if I were to change it to say this, run Thunar, looks different. Is this LXD or LX? Yeah, so LXDE uses GTK, so up here it looks different. Basically, this is your main program for like theming graphical applications. Dunst, depending on your distribution and how they have it configured. Let me see something. That's a cringe file name. I'll fix it later. Um, depending on distribution, you either have to enable it manually the service manually, or it'll know when to run automatically through Dbus. So if I were to send a notification, hello there, it's going to give you a little notification up here. It says, little blue bar, it says hello there. So you get your notifications. Um, if you don't get a notification, if you run not notify send, and the error isn't, uh, the error isn't notify send command not found, which just means you have to install it, if if you don't get a notification, then that means you either have to enable the service manually or you don't have Dbus enabled, which is out of the scope of the video. It depends on your distribution on how to enable services. Usually it's system D, so it's system control enable Dbus, but again, out of the scope of this video. And... One last thing is if you, you'll probably run into scripts that use drun or dmenu more than more than Rofi. So what I have here, I recommend is uh, uh, open new text editor as root. So sudo user bin user bin local user local bin dmenu and enter in this exactly so pound exclamation point forward slash bin forward slash sh enter rofi space dash d menu space dollar sign one sudo chmod plus x so make that script executable excuse me and now every time you need to run d menu so in, in this case let's say i made a script that goes one, two, three, pipe it in D menu, and now it runs Rof uh, Rofi um, like it's D menu. So that's, that's my recommendation for software for people who are new to tiling window managers, or really window managers in general. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and hopefully I'll be able to get back to you.